In this video, I'll show you how to find the centroid of solids with integrals. The question reads, find the centroid of a hemisphere of radius r. We're not told anything about this hemisphere. We're not told the radius. We're not told where it lies along the xy plane. So we have to start from scratch. First of all, a hemisphere is half a sphere. So let's come up with the volume formula of a sphere and then divide it by 2 because that will be important when we seek to find the coordinates of the centroid. So we have the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. That's the volume formula for a sphere. So to find half of that, we divide by 2. And if you divide by 2, you end up with 4 over 6 pi r cubed, or simply 2 over 3 pi r cubed. Keep that in mind for later. Next, to generate a hemisphere, we can use the formula r squared is equal to y squared plus x squared, then rotate it along the x-axis. Normally, when it comes to graphing a function that looks like this, we have a defined value of r. But in this case, we don't have a defined value of r, so we have to work with simply r, which will represent a constant. Now, to find the volume of this solid, we have to use the disk method which is you use cylindrical disks all along the axis of rotation, where their thickness, or height, is represented as the change of x, their radius is the function y is equal to, and their volume is represented as the change of volume dv. If that didn't make sense to you, let's write the volume formula for a cylinder. v is equal to pi r squared h, where our r is the y, y squared. Our h, the height of these, is dx, as mentioned earlier. And it's also shown in the diagram. And dv is the volume. So the first thing that I'll do is replace this y with what it's equal to. y is equal to, and if I rearrange this, I end up with r squared minus x squared. So I'm going to replace this y with r squared minus x squared. Don't forget the dx. Now when it comes to finding the centroid of a solid, you need to find the moment about the x and about the y. The moment about the base of this hemisphere, the y-axis, is represented using this formula, where moment along y is equal to the volume times the distance to the perpendicular axis, so distance to x. And since it's being rotated along the x-axis and is perfectly symmetrical, as you can tell in this diagram, mx is 0. The opposite is true if the solid was rotated along the y-axis. In that case, my would be 0. So this will be x. We know our volume formula is right here. Pi r squared minus x squared times x. Now that we've found this very important expression, by integrating this expression, we'll end up with the total moment. So let's go ahead and integrate this. And the bounds will be between 0 and r. So we want to use the radius when x is equal to 0, and the radius when x is equal to the end of this hemisphere. Pi r squared minus x squared x dx. Integrating this isn't too hard. First, I'll pull out the pi. Now this part, we'll multiply this x into here. This gives us x r to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 3 dx. We integrate now with respect to x. This becomes r squared x squared over 2, while this term becomes minus x to the power of 4 over 4. And we will find the integral at r and 0. If we substitute r and 0 into here, we'll end up with the following expression, where we have pi r to the power of 4 over 4. And you can confirm that on your own by doing some work on the side. Now that we found my, we can actually go ahead and find the distance of the centroid along the x-axis, so the x-coordinate of the centroid. And that is equal to my over volume, because remember, Moment is equal to volume times the distance to the axis. Now, since this is my, it will give us the perpendicular distance, which is the x-coordinate. 
my is equal to pi r to the power of 4 over 4. The volume of a hemisphere is right here, and we found that earlier. 2 over 3 pi r cubed, 2 over 3 pi r cubed. And solving for x bar, we end up with 3r over 8. This means that the centroid of this hemisphere of unknown radius will always have the format 3r over 8, that's your x bar, and 0. And the reason why this is 0 is because the hemisphere that we generated was symmetrical along the x-axis. All of this can be summarized using these two formulas, namely the first one, when the distance of the centroid of the volume is about the x-axis. If you had the opposite, you would be using this formula. So there you have it. That is how to find the centroid of 3D objects with integrals.